Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, we're going to begin our study here. Uh, Sabbath is coming in a few hours here, a couple hours, and uh, I hope you all have a good Sabbath, but let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are <clears throat> so very grateful for the time that we have to study together. We know that we live in a difficult time and age, and um, the struggles around us um, that we experience personally, personal struggles, are, are part of your purpose and plan. And we ask, Lord, that you can help us to cling to you, to trust in you, in spite of what we see. We pray that you can be with us in this study through thy spirit to teach and teach us and that you can guide in how we in what we study and how we look at these things that you can enlighten our minds um, we pray for each person that you can help them in their, their personal struggle help them in their search for truth and we pray that you can watch over each one with your angels we pray also lord for this movement for this message Help us to realize that it's about the people that you are seeking to save. Be with us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, good evening. Um, you're looking here at Ezra chapter 7. Now, we know that in 2013 and 14, <clears throat> Uh, we came to start to look at Ezra 7, 9. And the significance of that um, is that in Ezra 7, 9, it says, For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Jerusalem, talking about Ezra. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. And when we saw the first day of the first month, what did we understand the, what was the significance in seeing the first day of the first month in Ezra 7, 9? I know that's kind of a broad question, um, but if I ask it too specifically, then I'm giving away the answer. So what was the significance of finding this first day of the first month in Ezra 7, 9? What did we know about the first day of the first month? that it was the beginning of the Jewish year. Okay, so it's the beginning of the Jewish year. And in 2013, when did we think that the Jewish year began in 1844? Initially, at, initially it was in March that they thought. Yeah. yeah, so we just had March 21st. Now, of course, to me, it's kind of odd because we're Seventh-day Adventists, and we believe that the 10th day of the seventh month in 1844 was October 22. But for some reason, this movement hadn't really grasped the idea that in 1844, the first day of the first month couldn't be March 21st if the 10th day of the seventh month is October 22nd. Now, I knew it wasn't March 21st. I knew it was April 19th. Um, because I'd studied this years before, but the average Adventist and even people in this movement, people like Jeff, hadn't worked on the calendar and they hadn't understood uh, correctly Millerite history. So we would look at the first disappointment. We would say, well, that was March 21st, 1844, but it wasn't. Now, it was for those who had not accepted the understanding that was developing in Millerite history regarding the calendar prior to March 21st, because that was the date that Miller had marked at the end as the end of his prophetic periods. But not everybody accepted this, this further understanding of the calendar. And so those people who had March 21st as the end of Miller's prophetic period the vast majority of the, of the movement left the movement after March 21st. Just because of that? What's that? 
I said just because of that. Well, because March 21st had passed, and that was the end of Miller's prediction to them. Oh, okay, yeah. They didn't accept that, that the month began in April. They believed that the month began in March because they, were, they would be using the Jewish calendar. And the Jewish calendar in 1844 said March 21st is the first day of the first month. Oh, that, oh I got it. I see. Yeah. So thanks for that. Because it's important that we understand what, what was happening. So on our earlier charts in this movement, um, we would have March 21st marked as the first disappointment. And, and in a sense, that's correct. It, it's correct in the sense that it was where many of the people left the movement. Now, there were some who still held on until April 19th and then left as well. So it's really a period of time. It's a month, roughly from March, well, it's, it's a lunar month from March 27th to April 19th. And it's going to be a period of 29 days. And so once you get to April 19th, though, in order to accept um, the 10th day of the seventh month, you would have to accept April 19th. But many people left the movement after April 19th, from March 21st to April 19th, 1844. <clears throat> so... So we came to understand, though, once we looked at Ezra 7.9, we had to do this calculation. So this was in 2017, or 2017, 2013, at the camp meeting in Alberta that I first heard of it. And Jeff had started looking at it earlier in the year because um, Emiliano had um, looked at this. But Emiliano hadn't fully understood the chronology of it. So in 2014, it's going to be Noel who's uh, going to um, lay this out. Now, I had done it in 2013, but I'm not anybody in the movement, so nobody really um, knew about what I had done. But basically, I had done what Noel had done. And, but he does this in um, uh, the camp meeting, I believe, in the summer, um, I'm not sure which camp meeting that he did these presentations on, but he laid it out. He drew out a chart. He counted all of the days, and he showed when the first day of the first month was and when the first day of the fifth month was and where the tenth day of the seventh month was. So he just drew out every day, and, and then we could understand that April 19th must be the first day of the first month, but that means... Um, the symbol of the first day of the fifth month and the first day of the first month, they now, we start to understand the symbols of these, and we can see that these days exist in the Bible. Now, the first day of the fifth month, uh, it took us time to find uh, all of the places that this is, but what was the first place after Ezra 7-9 that we looked for the symbol of the first day of the fifth month? Does anybody know? where we found that in the Bible. I don't remember. Okay, how about the death of Aaron? Right, so Aaron's gonna die on the first day of the fifth month. Oops, just gonna copy this here. Now, what, what was the significance of finding that Aaron died on the first day of the fifth month? This is going to be Numbers 33, 38. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the 40th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was 123 years old when he died on Mount Hor. So what was the significance then of seeing that this first day of the fifth month was the day that Aaron died. Does anybody remember the significance of that, if you know that history? And even if you don't, what would you think it was? Isn't it kind of a precursor to the children of Israel 
coming into the promised land. Okay, right. So, so we can see that they're that they've left Egypt, just like they left Babylon, and then they're going to. Now it's going to be forty years here. It's not going to happen in the same year. Um, but there's this date connected with them uh, going from Egypt into the Promised Land. Now, when you look at the Julian date, that is the Julian calendar we use for historic dates, the first day of the first month is April 26th, 457 BC. Now, when they left on the 15th day of the first month in 1533 BC, um, that's going to be also April 26th. And April 26th, these dates become symbols. And, and the main thing I'm trying to point out here is that we started to really recognize that these biblical dates were symbols and that we could lay the first day of the fifth month over top of the first day of the fifth month and it would give us more information. Now we have another place where we have fifth month, but it's hidden. And this is in the book of Ezekiel. And this is going to be, I always forget the chapter number. It's going to be, here it is, 26. So in Ezekiel chapter 26, there's going to be this prophecy against Tyre. And it says, it came to pass in the 11th year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, now, it doesn't say which month. It just says the first day of the month. But Ezekiel hasn't given us any dates in the 11th year. Um, right? So we're going to have here, if we go back, Ezekiel is going to give us um let me see if i can remember i think it's 24 yeah so in the ninth year in the 10th month in the 10th day of the month is the previous date that he tells us about that's in chapter 24. so he hasn't given us any dates yet in the 11th year until we get to chapter 26. so this is the 11th year of um zedekiah um in the first day of the month. So how are we going to know what month it is? If it doesn't tell us what the month is, how are we going to know? Now, I'm saying it's the first day of the fifth month, and we'll see why. But how would I know that it's the first day of the fifth month? Well, if I read in the context, it will tell me that. So it says, Son of man, because that Tyrus hath said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, that was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me, and I shall be replenished. Now she is laid waste. So when he's referring to that was broken, that was the gates of the people, what is he referring to? When was well, Jerusalem it broken? The siege when, when the city gates were broken down during the siege. Okay, so I when, right. Six. So, well, it's it's going to be, yeah. So it's going to be the, pre, the previous month because we know that, that the walls are going to be broken down in Jerusalem in um, the ninth day of the fourth month. Right, and we know that the temple is going to be destroyed on the tenth day of the fifth month. So this is something that's going to be happening after she is broken, but before the temple is destroyed. So this would be, have to be the first day of the fifth month. So Jerusalem is broken, the walls are broken, it's the siege has ended. Now. Ezekiel never writes about the the end of the siege. He only direct he only directly refers to the beginning of the siege. That was in chapter 24, verse 1. 
in the ninth year in the tenth month on the tenth day of the month that the siege began um, but he's not going to write about he's not going to give you the date that the walls were broken down and he's not going to directly give you the date that um, the temple was destroyed he's not going to mention those two dates you're going to have to look other places in in second kings and in jeremiah to find those dates now what's the significance that so we can place this as the first day of the fifth month in in ezekiel 26 verse 1 but what is the significance that the date is hidden Why, does, why don't they just tell us it's the first day of the fifth month? See, because we, we didn't, in this movement, we never understood it was the first day of the fifth month because nobody tells us that. Now, some people will, if you look at some commentaries like this one here, this is uh, John Gills. It came to pass in the 11th year of Jehoiakim's captivity. Um, some people thought it was the first month. Some think it's the fourth. Some think it's the fifth. Um, so, you know, there's different opinions, but we're going to know that based on the context, it makes the most sense that this is the fifth month. It's not going to be the first day of the first month because Jerusalem is not broken yet. So that wouldn't make any sense. And it wouldn't make sense that it's the first day of the fourth month because Jerusalem's not yet broken. So this is going to be after the siege has ended but before the temple is destroyed. So this is nine days before the destruction of the temple that we have this prophecy here. But the question is, it being hidden, what is the significance of it being hidden from this movement, also hidden in the book of Ezekiel, until it's opened up at a certain time? What would that mean about the first day of the fifth month? It's sealed. Okay, so it, it's in a sense sealed. So. It's sealed and it's going to be opened up. So it's purposeful that it's hidden. Yeah. And, and we also see the same thing in Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1, where it talks about in the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah, in the 10th day of the month. And many people will think that that's the 10th day of the first month. And actually our movement thought that. Um, so when this movement first looked at Ezekiel 40, verse 1, and we started looking at symbolic dates, we thought this was the 10th day of the first month because the beginning of the year would be in the spring. But in Hebrew, this is Rosh Hashanah. And we also know that this is the day of, uh, the day of atonement. And when the day of atonement is the beginning of the year instead of the first day of the seventh month. Being the tenth day, seventh month then, huh? Yeah, it's the 10th day of the seventh the month. Hours. And it happens to be October 22nd, um, 573 BC, right? So, so the main point here is you don't need to remember all that at this moment, but to realize that there are dates that are hidden that this movement first didn't fully understand. And we can see that with how we understood Millerite history. So we thought the first day of the first month was March 21st. But then we came to realize it was April 19th. We also looked at other dates and misread them because it wasn't time for us to understand them. So why does God hide things from us? Why are there things like this in the Bible? Um, he wants us to keep uh, investigating, keep, keep the interest. Okay. But isn't this also tying it back with Daniel 12? Okay, explain how you're, what do you mean by that? Well, isn't Daniel given the, the instruction to seal up the words of this book? Mm -hmm. So if he's sealing up the words of the book, we've already accepted that this portion of Daniel 12 would be another precursor to the time of the end. Okay, right. So with that in mind, this portion being, quote, hidden, unquote, would mean that this is also a precursor to the time of the end. Right. And we know that Millerite history is also sealed up, right? Correct. 
right? That's going to be Revelation chapter 10, mm -hmm. the little scroll, the seven thunders. And, and we know that this movement is unsealing these thunders. And those in under sealing those thunders, what what were sealed up is an under understanding of Millerite history. But Millerite history, in, in order for it to be understood, had to be repeated. Correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would have to agree. Yeah. So that means you know, what Adventists might generally think, conservative Adventists who still believe the Bible, um, they would think that we have, um, you know, it unsealed after October 22nd, 1844, right? So they would say, well, now, you know, that, that was their disappointment that was sealed up. It wasn't good for them to know it. It's the mistake on the charts or whatever. Um, God had removed his hand. Of course, they're not going to put the 2520 in there. Um, but we know in just that verse that there is there in uh, the chat, which is uh, uh, Psalms 25. Where is it here? Psalms. It's Proverbs 25, too. Proverbs. It is the glory of God to reveal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Okay. Right. So God conceals things for his glory. Um, and the honor of kings is to search out the matter. So when we search out what God has hidden, what God has concealed, that's the honor of kings. Does that make sense? In the context. And you've got a two, five, two. Yeah, and it's Proverbs to 25 verse 2 so that's a symbol of the 2520 so we know that god has given us this symbolic um these symbolic dates to search out and to understand and that this comes from an understanding of millerite history that we're not just studying these things <coughs> um without without a context what do you say Bli blindly, blindly yes that we've, we've been given a pattern to study. And that pattern is Millerite history. And we know that, you know, when we look at Daniel chapter 12 and we look at Revelation 10, these sister chapters, one is the sealing up of the book and one sealing of the seven thunders. And, and we know that this is in connection with, with the seals themselves. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things involved in that. Um, but God is asking us to study his word, and it's as we pass through history that the events that we experience reflect upon the past, lighten those events of the past, and they shine light forward ahead of us to guide our feet. So the present and the past are needed to understand the future. And, and really, it's just the future that's for our feet. So God doesn't show us the whole scope of things. He shows us what's for our feet to guide us along a path. It's a path of faith, of trusting in God. And, and God does this to his glory. Why is this to God's glory that he conceals a thing? Why does he seal up things? To confound the wise. Okay. It's also for refining our characters. Yes. Right? If God showed us everything, one is we couldn't survive. So he shows us what we are able to bear. But he is, he is concerned about our characters because he wants us to be with him eternally in heaven. Okay, so now I want to go back to Ezra, and I'm, I'm going to go to the whiteboard here because uh, we have all the verses and we've gone through these verses before, so I, I don't really want to have to uh, um, 
That'd be helpful on the whiteboard too. <laughs> yeah. So you should be able to then see this. I have the wrong speaker on anyway. Uh, no, wrong microphone. No, I got the right microphone. Okay, just hang on. Got to switch that. Um, okay, switching to this camera. And I got to switch the microphone that will help. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. You're yeah. coming through fine. So we know the story of Ezra in 457 BC. He leaves Babylon on the first day of the first month. He arrives at the river Ahava, and then on the 12th day of the first month, he's going to leave after a period of three days. So, I mean, this is, is really a review. And we know that he arrives at Jerusalem on the first day of the first month. And after a period of three days, he's going to bring the gold and silver to the temple. And the gold and silver here is given to the priest. Three days later, they leave the river Hava. They travel to Jerusalem. And then after three days, they bring the gold and silver to the temple. Or silver and gold, I guess, is the order. Brother Theodore? Yeah. Can you, can you make that bigger? You got it? Is that bigger? I can't yeah, write. I can't, uh, okay. I can't write it bigger because then I won't have uh, enough room if I make things too big. I mean, I can write this a little bit bigger. First day of the fifth month, and then we know that there's there's going to be a, a call to repentance, and that on the twentieth day of the ninth month, after this three-day call to repentance, they're going to repent, right? And the center of this is the 10th day of the seventh month. And this is the time he sets up the civil authority. And this is when he puts it into action here um, these three days at the beginning of these three days. So, so this is going to mark the period in which uh, the restoration of the city occurs, right? That is the setting up of the civil authority. And the center of that is the start of the 2300 days, right? So we know that this is going to mark uh, the beginning of the 2300 days, which is 2300 years, and it's going to end in 1844 on October 22nd. And then there's going to be this, um, the first day of the 10th month. And there's going to be this first day of the first month again. You should be able to see that. Maybe it's not the easiest to see because of the reflection there. I don't know. But anyway, so there we have that year. Now, the number of days here to here, if I was going to count uh, ordinally, this would be 355 days from the first day of the first month as day one to the first day of the first month as day 355. But this, this year itself has 354 days. That is, this is the first day of the year. And the last day of the year is going to be the last day of the 12th month. So there's 354 ordinal days in the year 457 BC. Now, Jewish years can have 353, 354, 355, 
were 383, 384, or 385. That is, it can, the years are not all the same length because of how they determine the year using the lunar, uh, um, a solar lunar calendar. They have to look for the first new moon after the spring equinox to start the first day of the first month. And so in this year, though, in particular, there's 354 days. Now, the average, if you did 12 lunar months, the average, like on the Islamic calendar, because they don't add leap, leap months, their year averages out to 354.367 days. That is, that's 12 times um, 29.530587 days, right? So you can't see that. There you go. So those are the number of days in a month. And so the average uh, length of 12 months is this number. But so you can see that sometimes, though, the year is going to be shorter. Sometimes it'll be this long. Sometimes it'll be one day longer. Um, so in this history, we also notice some things. So I'm going to get rid of this here. So the 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the first month is how many days? Oh, 29 days in a month. Okay. Yeah, well, there's 29 or 30. 30, okay. No, so the 20th day of the ninth month, what was the significance of that in our That was confession, confession, repentance. Okay, confession and repentance. So, but in our line, where did we mark the 20th day of the ninth month? Um, what's that? Um, Christmas of 21. What's that? Christmas of 21. Oh, Christmas of 21. December 25th of 21. Okay. Yeah, I just, Christmas caught me off guard, but I never really think about Christmas. Okay. So the 25th of December in 2021 write that here so this is uh december 25th 2021 right that's the 20th day of the ninth month as a symbol right that's because on the biblical calendar this is the 20th day of the ninth month now what about this divorce Thing that happens here, the tenth, the first day of the tenth month to the first day of the first month. What is this about? How did how did we apply this? Because our line ends here, right? We we take four fifty seven B C, and we come to this date. But what about this divorce proceedings? They go for, for the 10th, 11th, and 12th month. There's going to be a period of three months. Anybody know how many days that was? So 88 days. What's the significance of 88 days? Is 88 a symbol of something? I thought it was the priests. What to do with the priests? 
Okay, so Second Chronicles chapter 29. You have the priests and the Levites cleansing the holy place and the, and the most holy place for eight days. Holy place for eight days. It's going to be 16 days, so we have this symbol of 88 that has to do with this period of cleansing of the temple. So can we see as a symbol that the divorcement here parallels that cleansing? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, see how that parallels that. Okay. So now we're, we're going to look at something that's a bit more complicated than this, but the, the idea that we have here is there's this period of time, and we've, we've come to recognize what this is, how this relates to our lives, and, and to what has been going on in this movement. But in order for us to understand these symbols, we need to pass over fulfilled prophecy, the ground of fulfilled prophecy. And in this movement, we've seen lots of fulfilled prophecy. But it's never been understood until after it's fulfilled. That is, we, we've set up dates and cr chronology. We've made predictions. But we never understood what anything meant until after it was passed. And why is that? Why can't we make, why can't we predict something accurately? Because some people would say, well, you're, you're, you're a false prophet. You made a prediction and it didn't come to pass. But why, why can we not make a prediction accurately? Is it because we're a false prophet? Is there some other reason? Okay, now I'm going to put this date here as April 5th, 2030. So this is a date that's in the future. And I'm making the claim that this year in 457 BC represents um, a period of time in this movement that's going to start here. Now, why would I do that? Why would I put September 11, 2001 as the first day of the first month when Ezra leaves Babylon? Why would I do that? That's the beginning of the, the year. Okay, so it's the first day of the first month. And we're seeing that 457 BC represents our history. Because it represents Millerite history, doesn't it? I didn't really show that here. But it we does have represent it. Yeah. So since this is April 19th, 1844, and this is October 22, 1844, in the parallel between this history and Millerite history. We also know that September 11th is parallel with the first day of the first month in Millerite history, right? So we could put 9-11 here. And then I'm saying that we can take this history and it's going to reflect the history of this movement from September 11 or 9-11, 2001 to April 5th, 2030. Now, when it comes to April 5th, 2030, we have never predicted an event. We just know that it's, it symbolizes something. What specifically and whether that time actually comes to pass or not, we don't know. Though, as we are going through history, it seems clear to, and clear to me that this, and I'm not trying to put off the second coming or anything, but 2030 becomes closer and closer as we approach it, obviously, but we can see that events 
are looking in that direction, whether that means that we're, we're actually going to live through April 5th, 2030, and that it will be some of that. that we don't know yet because we can't predict the future. But we can see that as a symbol, at least, that it's going to mark a period of time from here to here. Now, if this is a period of 354 days, can we mark these days as equal a month? Can we do a day equals a month? Is that proper? A day for a month. That's a very interesting concept. Okay. I've heard it before, but I'm not sure. Well, the thing is, we can actually count the number of months from 2001 to 2030, to April 5th, 2030, and we will find that there is two different ways we can count it. A month can equal 29.530587 days, or a month can equal 30 days, right? That is a lunar month or a prophetic month. Either one of these are valid. So, so we're, we're going to look at that. I know I've done this before, but I know nobody remembers it. Dwight, did you have something to say? What I was going to say is I think that both of them are valid. Right. So both are valid. Exactly. Now, I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to switch all this back. Okay, <clears throat> so you should be able to hear me pretty well. Now I'm going to go to a file, which I don't know if I sent this to everyone or not, because it was something that we had, Iran and I had worked on. Um, now what you see here is 457 BC, and this column here represents all of the days in 457 BC. And you'll see there's 354 days. That's this number on the left. It's counting those days. And each one of these days are going to represent a month. And these months are named after the, the Hebrew months, right? So you can see over here, here's Nisan. That's the first month. ER, the second month. Sivan, the third. Tammuz, the fourth. Av, the fifth. Alu, uh, six Tishri, Heshvan, sometimes called Mar uh, Kislev is the ninth, Tevet the tenth, Shavet the eleventh, Adar the twelfth. If there is a second Adar, it's called Vyadar, right? And you can see that this is the first month, and it's going to start on April fourth, twenty thirty. And so this is the three. This is three hundred and fifty four days, being represented as three hundred and fifty four months. Now, when we do this. We're actually counting these months, uh, or lunar months. That is, these are the months that are 29.530587 days in length. Now, since I have to count lunar months, I have to start the month when the month begins. I can't just start it on any day I want. I'm starting it on the first day of that month. So it's going to be the sixth month. On the first day of the month is going to be August 22nd, 2001, and that month is going to end, um, well, here it says uh, September 20th. Actually, the last day would be September 19th, 2001, because the next month starts the next day, right? So September 20th, 2001 is the second month. So 9-11 occurs in this first month or the first day of the first month. Does that make sense? So we, yes. Yeah. So yes, it does. 28 days in a month or huh? 29 or 30, right? 29? Yeah. OK, yeah. Right. In this case, there would have been 29 days in this month. And this one would have had 30 days. But 
anyway. Um, so, so the first day of the first month in 457 BC is going to represent the month in which our symbol for the first day of the first month occurred, September 11th. And so we can count from that September 11th date from the first as being in the first day of the first month, and we can count all these days and we can see then it's going to bring us to 2030. So this would mean that this period of time is going to be representing uh, something in our history. Now we can count the days, so if we go to the 20th day of the ninth month, um, so there's the first day of the 10th month, that's going to be uh, February 22nd, 2023 to March 22nd, 2023. That's going to be when the divorce proceedings begin, according to this system of counting literal months. And the 20th day of the ninth month in this system would have been from April 3rd, 2022 to May 2nd, 2022. Right? So that's how we would look at that. So this is... If you're using, how come you say how come you say May second? It says May third. Because it, when I did this, oh. it's it's one day off. Um, oh, okay, I got you. Because the, the next month starts on May third. So the last, last day of the month would be May second. I think oh, I, I, got you. I think Iran actually gave me a corrected uh, version of this. I, I can't remember if he did or not. Okay, so. Okay. So we can see here that we can line up these, and, and there's a lot more to it, which I'm not going to go into right now. But um, I can take these 10th day of the, the seventh month. You'll see that's the 187th day of the year. And if we looked at it in our calendar, taking these literal months, this would be September 4th, 2016 to October 3rd, 2016. Now, there's another way that I could have done this. So that's with using lunar months, but I could also start on September 11th, 2001, and not worry about lunar months, but count from that day um, prophetic months, right? So prophetic months are 39 days. So instead of having something that, that averages out to 29.530587 days, I'm just gonna use 30 day months and I'm going to count from September 11th as being the first day of the first month. So you can see here that September 11th, if we look at the first day of the first month in the story of Ezra, it's going to represent September 11th to October 10th, 2001. Now, 1010 is a symbol of the siege. The 10th day of the 10th month is when the siege began. So it's kind of interesting that you have that 1010 there. And, and then the next month is going to go from 10.11 to 11.9. So, you know, it's kind of interesting as you look at this. But when I count 30 days, I'm obviously going to go longer, right? Now, if I count 30 days from 9.11, 30-day months, and I count 354 of them, when I come to the end of this, You'll see it's going to give me a different date than April 5th, 2030. It's going to give me um, this date, the eighth day of the 10th month, or October, October 8th, 2030. And October 8th, 2030 is the Day of Atonement. That is, in 2030, this is going to be 186 days past April 5th, 2030. Um, so the first day of the first month here is going to mark the Day of Atonement in 2030. This is going to mark the first day of the first month in 2030. This is going to mark the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So I've done two different ways of counting these. Now, we had um, looked at our history in connection with Collins' prediction. So in Collins' prediction, he had predicted um, events to happen in 2022. 
So I'll bring this up here. Um, I don't know if this is the best. You can't predict events, though. Well, yeah, we, we definitely can't predict events. That is, we, we don't know the future, but we can see a structure. We know that yeah, a structure, yeah. Yeah, we, and we can know that there are symbolic dates. So, so here we have this. This is a representation of the months. So that chart that we did, that, that uh, spreadsheet on Excel, it's kind of hard to look at. This is laying it out a little simpler to see. You can see the August 22nd, 2001. And we can see that this is going to bring us to April 5th, 2030. So I'm marking this. This is obviously the first day of the first month. Here, I just didn't put the first day. We have the 12th day of the first month. We have the 6th of Savan. That's going to be the center of these two dates. That's Pentecost. And then we have the center of the 10th day of the fifth month. The 20th day of the ninth month is the 10th day of Tishra. And, and um, so we have these dates lined up in this way. And then we have this part is just that period of time from November 3rd, 2020, from when Biden is, uh, the election happens, where Biden becomes uh, the president of the United States. And it's going to be a few days later that he actually is declared president. Um, and then we're going to have this February 16th, 2022 date, um, which, which I'm marking as significant and January 11th to 12th, 2023. So this is the end of Collins uh, structure. So it go goes up to January 11th as an inclusive count. So it, it it's the point between January 11th and January 12th that's being marked as these 65 days. So uh, the main point I want to bring out when Collins prediction ends, to April 5th is a period of 2,640 days, which is 88 months. So if we look down below, this is, again, the, the same line, but it's, it's using that chart that I was using, the September 11th. Um, oh, and I see why I did that. Okay. Now, if I count from, these are 30-day months. One is starting at September 11th going forward, and it'll end on um, October 8th, being the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So, um, so that month is going to end, that day is going to end, it's going to start on September 9th and end October 8th, 2030. So that's going to be the 10th day of the seventh month that's being marked there. And starting on September 11th. So I know this might be hard for some people to see. Depends what kind of device you're, you're looking at. But we can see that the first day of the 10th month um, is going to start on uh, July 18th to August 16th, 2023, on this chart here. Now, what was the sig significance of July 18th? 2023. Right. Why is that? Uh, 187. That's a... Okay, so it's July 18th is our, is our date, right? Now, yeah, yeah. this is if I start on the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. But if I go to April 5th, 2030, and I count back, I'm going to come to a month that's going to start on January 12th. That is, I'm going to come to this date, 2023. So from the end of Collins' prediction, which starts on the first day of the 10th month, to April 5th is going to be 88 months, or literally 2,640 days. That is, that's the symbol we have uh, for Islam, two, six, four. So this is months of 30 days, right? Um, so I can count back from that. So Collins' prediction has this begins, the end of it begins the divorce. 
So what does that mean? So Colin has this prediction. Now he's not predicting that date. His structure gives us that date, January 11th, 2023. But we're saying that that date is correct as a symbol of marking the divorce proceedings that are talked about in the book of Ezra. And those are gonna be 88 months or 2,640 days to April 5th, 2030. So what would this mean if the divorce proceedings begin on January 11th, 2023 as a symbol? What does that mean? I'd say they're related. Okay, so, so they're related. So we can look at the story of Ezra, and we know we have the end of our line, the end of the 777 days that's going to bring us to December 25th, 2021. And, and that's marked by the 20th day of the ninth month. But following the 20th day of the ninth month is going to be this period of time that's going to lead us to the divorcement. And then the divorce proceedings happens for these 88 months, 88 days in the story of Ezra. But in our history, we're taking a day for a month. And we can get that because we can look at the period of time from September 11th, 2001 to April 5th, 2030 as representing 354 months. Sometimes we use the symbol as prophetic months to arrive at dates, and sometimes we're using literal months, but both are valid. And they give us different symbols depending, but that relate to each other um, if we do that. So, so there's different ways, three different ways we can do it. So here we can see that clearly everything that we had been studying um, tells us that the end of Collins' predictions begins this divorce proceedings. So what, where is this divorcement? What are we being divorced from? According to Ezra? Strange wives, which is equal to strange doctrine. Okay, so strange wives, which is the, the Protestant teaching, right? Jeff, you have a comment? Agreed. Oh, yeah, I just, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> just your mic goes on, so. Okay. And we see that we have to come to there before the divorce proceedings begin. But we have made a call to repentance, and that call to repentance symbolically occurs from July 18, 2020 to December 5th, or December um, 25th, 2021. And, and some people reject that call, right? Uh, FFA rejected that call, didn't they? On December 6th, 2021, they wrote a declaration that rejected that call. And what happens to those that reject the call? Well, you go into darkness. In the story of Ezra. If we, if we look in the story of Ezra, it tells us in Ezra chapter 10. Um, just got to find it here. Because there are, are different conditions uh, that, or authority that was given, that was given uh, Ezra by Artaxerxes' decree. There's four, of the, four different things. They could do the death penalty. They could confiscate goods. They could banish and... Um, what was the other one here? Just let me. So I'm, I'm going to change my screen here. <clears throat> so, as a banishment, okay. confiscation of goods, or imprisonment. So they could be jailed, right? So in, in chapter 10, we make this call. Um, Jeff, your mic's too, too noisy. Okay. 
I have to turn that it's just too noisy unless you're actually speaking keep your mic off so it says here in verse 8 that whosoever would not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and elders all his substance should be forfeited so notice you have the counsel of the princes and elders so this is actually really referring to um, the civil authority that's been set up all his substance should be forfeited that's confiscations of good and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away so he would be banished right so those two things two of the four things the authority that was given Ezra in Artaxerxes decree are going to be put in force in this call to repentance so they're going to be separated from their strange wives and it's going to be done according to the law so that means they will be taken care of they're not just cast out you know to to die um, their, their wives and their children will be taken care of uh, according to the law now we have then a period of time that happens from the 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the tenth month and that's a period of um, if we put it in it's actually 11 days but if we put it in prophetic months, it's 330 days. And that brings us to February 16th, 2022. So that's the date that's passed. And I've noted before on that date was when um, in this movement, uh, our group, our studies that we do were no longer being promoted by um, the other people in the movement. That is, they used to have links, and it's on February 16th, 2022, that when um, their email is sent out, I no longer include the link to my studies on that date. So, That's interesting, February 22nd. Uh, uh, wow. February 16th there. Oh, well, 16th. Yeah, 16th, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, anyway, so this date, February 16th, 2022, um, is tied to the December 6th, 2021 date and to so that's a period of time that's that um, ties all of that together so there's there's more to it than that but um, we can see that this is part of that call to repentance that is rejected and and both of them uh, in a sense end up banishing us so we are the ones banished or at least I am um, by by the decree on December 6, 2020, and by the the sort of silent or tacit rejection of the message on February 16th, 2022. You're so, not alone. Yeah, I know. But I, I realize that. So anyway, we have these 11 days and these 88 days represent uh, 2,640 days and 330 days that we can then place now the reason why i'm looking at this because i've done this before but i started thinking about some things and uh so i'm just going to go back to this chart here and and there's so many ways that we've looked at 2030 i mean as far as the chronology of it there's all this different evidences which we looked at last week and i'm going to still try to put it into a paper well, I'm putting it into a paper um, with that chronology that is laid out. But, but we know we have all these different connections. The week of Christ study is where we first see April 5th, 2030, being the first day of the first month in that week of Christ study. Um, and, of course, it was ignored at first because that seemed out of the scope of the dates that we had. But now we can see that it makes a lot of sense, especially as we connect it with um, what's happening in the world, with the World Economic Forum, as looking at this 2030 date. And so I use that as a way of, of sort of examining the World Economic Forum. Now, I'm of the view that the World Economic Forum is not the one that we're fearful of. They are, are definitely laying a groundwork for the papacy and for the United States to bring in the Sunday law, but the World Economic Forum 
is not going to act on its own. And it's actually quite incompetent in what it's doing. Its ideas are juvenile. Um, if, if they were the only thing we had to fear, we would have nothing to fear because they really are impotent. Um, but of course, they're not the only ones. They're one third of Babylon. And so uh, they fit into this, this history uh, in a particular way. So, you know, they're not going to have that world that they imagine that they're going to have because it's, it's just pie in the sky. It's nothing. No, no utopia. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a utopia. And, and, of course, they can do a lot to destroy this world. So I'm not saying that they're, they're not going to be um, bad for things because they are, because they're destructive. But that's probably their purpose, in a sense, um, in the big scheme of things, is to undermine our society and to create a world, then, that can bring in a Sunday law. So they're part of a, a destructive power, a satanic power, uh, that really can not do nothing but destroy. And it's divided against itself. So it's, it's impotent in that sense. Satan, uh, his, his agents don't work in harmony with each other. Um, but anyway, that's part of what we studied with the World Economic Forum. We can see that they're, they're not really the threat. It's not what we're looking at. Um, but they definitely have a part to play, and um, but it'll be more to some degree the reaction against uh, what they have done that will bring about the threefold union. So the World Economic Forum is not necessarily uh, the United Nations itself either. It's it's a part of Satan's uh, secular powers that uh, seek to destroy. Um, so. Uh, the UN is something bigger than that. So the World Economic Forum, they may be globalists, but they don't represent all globalists. Um, anyway, so so we have these dates here. And, and the question is, what would April 5th, 2030 represent? I mean, if we take this line in the story of Ezra, and we're starting with 9-11, and we're coming to our time, um, or coming to this time, so our time, we start here, this is our whole period of time, and we're taking it, lining up with, this, with the line of Ezra. He leaves Babylon on the first day of the first month, but this, this work on the first day of the first month that's completed, if it's the divorcing of the strange wives that's completed, what would then be completed? What, what would that represent? Would this be connected with the symbol of midnight on the line of the Levites? Even though it's the first day of the first month. Or, or would we look at it as something else? Is it another disappointment? Or is it something else? <clears throat> I would almost have to think it was another disappointment. Okay. Um, well, so there's ways that we could examine this. Now, um, Aran, I have a question. Uh, let me see if I can. When I want to open up one of those uh, calendar files, where do I save them that I can open them up? Are they just saved in documents? Um. They, they'd be downloaded. The files that you download, you can load them by saying, or clicking on that button that says choose file. Oh, okay. So I go choose file, and then it'll bring me to a folder? Yes. Um, and that folder is where? In downloads? Most likely your, your downloads folder. Okay, and what do those files look like? Um, what are they titled as? They, they usually have a date followed by, uh, I think it's called like save dates or something, .json. Okay, so maybe I put them somewhere else, I just can't. 
So they just have a date and then so they're obviously not in there. Oh, actually, it looks like they're called calendar converter dates and then as a date and then the dot JSON. And they would, and I would have saved them in, so they're called calendar converter dates? That's just the beginning of the file name by default. Okay, I see. Okay, that makes sense. So it's a JSON file. I know. Um, Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out choose file. I can't seem to find them. It's weird. Sorry about this, people. Thought this would be easier. But they don't seem to show up in uh, for some reason um, you can also see a history in your Chrome like if you go to your downloads I know and they don't show up in there uh, okay I'm not sure why that's really weird okay here's some What's the date today? Hmm. Is there a certain number that I can, um, let me do it this way. Ah, there we go. I see what I did. Okay, now I can choose file. There we go. Okay, so that's what I wanted. Now we're going to just take a look at this here in Okay. So we have a number of dates to look at. <clears throat> and can you see this fairly well? Could I make it bigger, maybe? I can see it. Okay, so. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Now, there's a number of dates, and we're just going to look at them. And to see if this gives us any information. Now, on the bottom date there, you'll see April 5th, 2030, and the top date is going to be August 11th, 1840. And the next date is April 19th, 1844. And we can see um, when we count from April 19th, 1844, so you can see across there, and I look down, it's going to be uh, 67,921 days to April 5th, 2030. That's counting from the beginning of April 19th, 1844. Now, the first disappointment happens at the end of April 19th, 1844, correct? Correct. Yeah. So the number of days between there is exactly... Uh, what I would get if I counted 2,300 lunar months. That is, if I go 2,300 times 29.530587 days, I get 67,920.3501 days. 
So it's just slightly more than 67,920 days. So, um, but we can also see April 19th, 1844 is the first day of the first month. And April 5th, 2030 is also the first day of the first month. So if we were to count the number of months, it's going to be 2,300 months, right? So that is Inter interesting. <laughs> so from now in Millerite history, um, they count from April 19, 1844, 186 days. From the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030 is 186 years. Right, so that means 2,300 months is exactly 186 biblical years. So that means instead of counting to October 22nd, 1844, 186 days, we can count 186 years and we come to April 5th, 2030. So we're using the symbol of 2300 months, the 2300 days symbol, and we're using the symbol from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So we can see that both of these give us this April 5th, 2030. Now, if we count um, prophetic years, it would be 187 prophetic years because they're 360 days in length and 20 prophetic months. So from April 19th, 1844 to April 5th, 2030 is 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months. So we have the symbols there for July 18, 2020. We have the symbols for the 2300 days and we have the symbol counting from the first day of the month, first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, of course, this 186 years is going to be bring us to the first day of the first month. But we know that if we get to the first day of the first month, we also can go to the 10th day of the seventh month, which we found in 2030 is going to be October 8th, 2030. So if I count 186 days from, from this date, so if I go here, here we see April 5th, 2030, and I'm going to count 186 days, it's going to be, bring me to October 8th, 2030. And we saw we could count from September 11th, 2001, 354 prophetic months. And that would bring us to October 8th, 2030. So it's going to bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month, Tishri 10, in 2030. So that means whatever April 5th, 2030 means, there's also a connection to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. That is, there's something about that period of time, whether it's just symbolic, whatever it means, we don't know, but it means something. We, we can't just ignore it because there's too many things that point to it and that connect to our history, to Colin's prediction, to the year of Ezra, so uh, in 457 BC. So would we all agree that there is some significance here? Whatever it is, there has there's to got be. To be. There's got to be. All these things line up like this. Impossible. Yeah. Now, now, I did something interesting. That is, I looked at today's date. So here you can see August 12, 2022 on this line. Right? Now, um, when, I, when I first did this, I looked at this date. And I saw that it was um, 2,793 days uh, before April 5th, 2030. Now, the significance to me was I wanted to know how many weeks that was. And it happens to be uh, 399 weeks. So from today, it's 399 weeks um, to um, April 5th, 2030. So, I mean, we count weeks. And, and so that's because it's going to be a Friday, right? So today's a Friday. That's going to be on a Friday as well. Um, but the, one of the things I noticed is that it was, well, it's a number that um, 
I was thinking about weeks, and I thought, well, how many jubilee cycles of weeks is it? That is, or maybe we could say uh, Pentecost cycles, because it's going to be seven weeks, right? So I thought, if I took that number, you know, how many would it be? And, and then I started thinking about the great jubilee. So you can see here this great jubilee symbol. That is, if you go from 457 BC to Daniel's captivity, it brings you to, um, uh, to this jubilee number. And, and where did Miller have that end when he did the jubilee? He started on 607, and he's going to take 50 jubilee cycles. And he's going to end it in 1843, right? He calls that the Great Jubilee. Well, jubilees um, every 49 years. Yeah, and so he's going to count 50 of uh, them. The 50th. 50? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the so the 50. So it's going to be 50 jubilees. And so that's 2,050 okay. years. Um, so what I did is I counted backwards from April 5th, 2030, and I wanted to see what date I would get. And the date I got was um, July 21st, 2023. And besides being Dwight's birthday, uh, what is the significance of July 21st? Midnight. So it's Midnight. A so, so I noticed this, but also I had our date, today's date, on this list. And I noticed that that's going to be 343 days from today. Now, what's 343? Seven cubed. Okay, so it's seven times seven times seven, right? And, and we know that that's connected with the 777 structure. So then I thought, well what's going to be um, 434 days before today? That is, you can see the 777 here. So if I, if I go up here, you can see that I put a date in there, and that date is 777 days before July 21st, 2023, and that's June 4th, 2021. Now, since this is a date dealing with the date that we're doing a study, Right, and these are going to be weeks. That was a study that I did on June sixth or June sixth, June fourth, twenty twenty one. And the date, the study that I did on June fourth, twenty twenty one, was the last of a series of studies on the week of Christ. And that was the twenty third study that I did on the week of Christ. Would there be significance in this date then as it relates to our study of 2030? Because isn't the week of Christ how we came with April 5th, 2030 in the first place? Yep. Okay. So, so now we can see that this is relating at least this part here. Um, these two dates to our studies relating to 2030, to the week of Christ study. And of course, the week of Christ study is tied in with this 777, dealing with the 70 weeks. There's a whole bunch of things we studied this past week related to that, and the week before related to this 70, and to uh, Jotam, um, the son of uh, uh, Gideon, who survived the slaughter of his. 69 other uh, brothers, right? Now, uh, the next thing I did is I counted back again 777 days, and I came to April 19th, 2019. And April 19th, 2019, um, there's a lot to that study, but it was a date that I'd marked in 2019 in connection with um, uh, the betrayal of Judas, that is, April 18th, 2019, was one of the dates that I had marked for Judas' betrayal. Depends how you would count it. Ended up being April 8th when Jeff retires, but 
it's also connected with that history. So, but we know it's a symbol of the first day of the first month, right? So the fact that it happens to be 777 days prior to me completing that week of Christ study uh, is significant. Plus, if we count, we divide this into 343 and 434, if I count 343 days from that date, it brings me to March 27th, 2020. And what's March 27th, 2020? Well, you got the, uh, the Levites. So the symbol of the Levites. Yeah. And on that date, the 100 days of prayer. 100 days of prayer, yeah. So 144,000 minutes. And um, it's the center of a chiasm that has March 27th, 2019 to start it and March 27th, 2021 to end it, right? It's part of our 777 structure. So it's interesting that here, as we just count back, um, we come to, to this date. So we have these dates here. So we would say that this is some kind of study that's connected to 2023 um, that deals with the week of Christ study, because this was about the week of Christ study. Um, this is about the week of Christ study. This is about the week of Christ study, and this is uh, some event that's still future, but relates to these symbols here. So it ties us to a date that's uh, over a year from now, or less than a year from now. So, um, so this might have something to do with this movement. I have no idea what it means, um, but it's there. Okay. Could even be an external event too, or some. Now, uh, yeah. Now, of course, we have. I have the September eleventh, two thousand one date. So remember, if we counted literal uh, or prophetic months from there, we would come to the tenth day of the seventh month in 2030 so that'd be october 10th but i can only put 10 dates on this chart so i can't uh, i can't put that date here but it's it's interesting um i did a calculation so here you'll see this number uh 10,464 now that's going to be from august 11th 2001 now that's going to be 31 days before September 11th, 2001, because there's 31 days in August. Um, so what would this represent if I can put August 11th and September 11th uh, together? What I'm going to do is I'll do this. Uh, I'm going to go to my calculator, so just show you what I mean. So what I started thinking about was um, these these different dates. And so what I wanted to do um, was I'm going to take an Islamic year. So remember, the year in, um, I would get a fresh calculator here. So the year in 457 was 354 days. But 9-11 addresses Islam, correct? Yep. And it connects to August 11th, 1840. So that is 9-11 symbolizes August 11th, but it also symbolizes April 19th, right? Yep. Something well established by Jeff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an Islamic year, which is uh, – 500, well, I'll, I'll do the whole math here so you can see it. So what I'll do is I'll take a month, and I'm just wondering what happened if I do this. That doesn't change anything. just wonder if I can make this look bigger on your... That doesn't really help. Okay. When you finish your thought, I have a question. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take... Um, 29.530587, that's the length of the month, 
times 12 gives me the length of the Islamic year. So it's 354.367. So on average, you're going to have uh, 12 lunar months is going to average out to that number. It's got a bit more of a decimal there, but I usually just do it to three decimal points. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply this by 29.530587. So I'm doing this, oops, um, I'm doing the Islamic year. Instead of the year of, of Ezra as being 354, I'm going to kind of take it as an Islamic year of 354.367 days. And then I'm multiplying it by the num by a month. So that is a day for a month, but it's a bit longer. Um, and I get this number, 10,464 days. That is, if I count from August 11th, 2001, 31 days before September 11th, to April 5th, 2030, it's going to be the length of the month times the length of the month times 12, or the length of the month times the length of the Islamic year. Now notice also the decimal 666 that follows, which is a satanic number that does connect us to Islam as well. Islam is connected to that symbol. So if we're going to look at this date 2030, one thing we can say is that it's connected to Islam, right? It's connected to 9-11. It's connected to Millerite history. And it's saying something about Islam. At least it should. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to make a prediction. I'm just saying if we look at the symbols, we can see that we can take the story of Ezra and we can lay it down over this history from 2001 to 2030, and it's going to give us all of these symbols. But these symbols really point to the symbols that began in at 9-11. Does that make sense to people? I can see that. Okay. Now, the movement, in a sense, has forgot about Islam. Yeah, I don't hear anything uh, here much. And, and of course, the news no. is sort of silent on that point. But we know but they're, they're, they're still active. Yeah, but yeah, they're still active. And we know they have a part to play in end time events. Um, but this movement doesn't really talk about it too much. But we know that Islam is still, 9-11 is about Islam, and that we know if we take the story of, of um, Balaam, we know that there are these different strikes of Islam. Our prediction on uh, July 18, 2020 was supposed to be about Islam. It didn't. But we know that symbolically it is connected because we can take the symbols of July 18, 2020, and we connect them to Collins' prediction, they also connect us to April 5th, 2020, 2030, right? So, so we know that we should look at this all as a unit, that this isn't, you know, we can't just pick some things, that there is this structure that's being given us, and that structure ends in 2030 at this point. But we're not predicting events. What we're trying to do is understand our history if something happens on those dates in the future, that's fine, but it's not dependent on something happening on those dates in the future. But one thing we would see is that Islam has to have a part to play in what's happening in future events from now. The other point I want to... have to rear their ugly head sometime. Yeah. Yeah, so the main thing that I think that we that we have seen as we've studied in this group, as we've studied through examining the foundation, as we studied through the week of Christ, as we've um, 
uh, we looked at understanding the lines. We can look at the foundation of this movement and we can see that it's been laid correctly. Now we have a people in this movement, and, and we talked about this a bit before the study, but um, there is this Trump predi prediction that's, that's been made. Now we know that this movement made a prediction about Trump, and what was the prediction about Trump that Jeff made? What, what was it that we understood about Trump? Last president of the USA. So he's the last president of the United States. And did he fulfill his role prophetically already? Uh, yes. Okay. The Republic, ended, Republic ended January 6th. Right. So we have January 6th, 2020, uh, 2021. That marks the end of the United States. They're taken over by the globalists. And... And we accept that July 18th and all of that history was correct. So we're not looking because July 18th was connected with this pandemic, this type of the Sunday law, all these different things were connected. And yet the one event didn't happen. That was the attack on Nashville. And so some people said, well, we must have been wrong. But in trying to uh, reassert Trump as president again, is it not a rejection of what we learned about the lines? That is, if Trump has already fulfilled his role, why would you want him to be president again? Does he need to become president again for Jeff to be correct? No. Because if he did, then Jeff was wrong. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So if he had to be still president, so you're trying to preserve what Jeff taught by making him have to become president again, that would be similar to the Millerites setting dates after October 22nd, 1844. Correct? Correct. Because you would not accept October 22nd. You would say, well, I'm trying to preserve what Miller taught but you're not preserving it because Miller's understanding through Samuel Snow led to the October 22, 1844 prediction. And, and if, if you're saying that that was wrong and we need to set another date, that would be the parallel to saying, well, Trump has to become president. Again. At least that's my understanding of it. We, we, it would be a rejection of the fulfillment that we see as typical. Now, somebody could say, well, I accept the typical uh, um, representation of Trump being the president, that prediction, but I still think he literally has to be the president during the Sunday law. But that would be ignoring the symbolism of type and anti-type, because if it was a typical Sunday law that Trump was the president of, the pandemic, we wouldn't be looking for Trump to become president again. We would just see that he represents something, and he re represents um, republicanism. But his republicanism isn't fully an apostasy, right? Because at the, the actual Sunday law, all the republican and protestant principles will be repudiated. The Constitution will be repudiated. And that didn't happen with Trump. So he's typical of something, but he can't be the actual. Does that make sense to people? Yes. Now, so we have 2030, and it's connected to our history, but it's also connected to this prediction which will fail, and that's the prediction that Trump's going to become president in 2022 or early 2023 in connection with the midterm elections. Now, if I was Colin, you know, who's, who's uh, making that prediction, he would say, well, the fact that 
it appears impossible will be evidence that we were correct once it happens. That is, um, right now, anybody looking at it would say it's impossible Trump's going to become president again. And he would not use that as a reason to reject his interpretation, right? He would say it doesn't look, matter how impossible it looks. You know, the Bible is what we trust in. But we can see in our study, we're also trusting in the scriptures. We're not just rejecting Trump becoming a president again because of what's happening in the world. We're rejecting it because of what happens in prophecy. So we're not we're not just naysayers. We're not just people looking at 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 the news and saying, well, Trump's not going to become president. I don't see how that's possible. No, we actually have a prophetic reason why we don't believe that Trump Trump is in if even if he did become president, it wouldn't negate what we've said in the past about the role of Trump. But the thing is, we can see that there's going to be um Prophetically, we see what the movement is, where it's heading, and we know that Trump's predi the Trump prediction must fail in order for uh, this movement to be healed. But there's many casualties along the way, right? And we see that in our morning studies as we're looking at judges. So we know that our history however we want to look at our lines, they do go to 2030. And if somebody thinks that we're putting off the second coming, uh, it's quite clear that that's not what's happening. This is not um, a peace and safety message. 2030 isn't telling people, oh, you have lots of time, because it's actually talking about a crisis that's occurring in this movement right now. And so there's nothing about putting something off. And there's no time will tell. Because we can see that time will tell is not a prophetic message. Um, so I know I'm going over a little bit. Um, So this is Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So this is a question that was asked Christ at the ascension. And he said unto them, It is not for you know, to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, Angela brought this up. Uh, here, I'll just go. Here. Okay. Um, so when we look at this verse, what is this telling us? Because we do know the times and the seasons to some degree, right? We're studying, we know that we have to study these things. But what does it may mean it is not for you know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power? Because the Millerites had this verse, but that didn't stop them from setting dates. Oh, I was wondering why that came into my head. Actually, it came into my head earlier during this meeting. And, and I thought, well, the Lord doesn't want us to focus on setting up kings and empires and secular powers and what have you and be obsessed with that as if it's going to vindicate us. We're just supposed to be yielding to him and eventually we'll be spirit filled if we continue to yield to him and then we'll be called then we'll be empowered to give 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 this message to the entire world but everything's in stages right jerusalem judea samaria and on to the other most part of the earth so i'm a bit uh, puzzled about this um, overemphasis on trump returning to power i believe that he, he he's definitely gearing up for it and people are supporting him to do that 
But if he declares himself president, however, if he's voting in or just decides that he's now the president, there's going to be civil war. I mean, it's inevitable. Right. So this that's what definitely. Some people, so that's what some people think. It's very disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we let's just yeah focus so, on serving Christ and forget about politics. Yeah. Well, we do need to measure the times, right? Um, we do need to know because when we look at um, uh, in Esdras. Um, it talks about measuring the times. Um, 2 Ezra 9 verse 1 says, uh, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, um, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And this is what we are doing. To me, this is part of watching and waiting. So there's nothing wrong with placing dates in the future. But we know that we are to watch and wait. And wouldn't part of watching be measuring the time? Yes, I agree with that. It's just that people are, are focusing on an individual who is a friend of Klaus Schwab, who commends Klaus Schwab, who, who prizes Pfizer. And there's just so many other things that, you know, he's a, he's a despicable person. And I don't want to see him in power, that's for sure. But, I, but Biden's probably even worse. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, they're not expecting Trump to be our savior, uh, like the Protestants are. But, you know, if Trump did become president again, nobody would really care that we suggested that. You know, but there's some people that are, all, they seem to be hanging their hats on that, though. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how it appears to me, as if, as if this is going to vindicate us for being who we are. Is this yours? I found this under the, uh, uh, under the freezer. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we can see, in, and I know I went over time here, but I really wanted people to see how we can understand these dates and their connection. And that we can measure the times, but we can't know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put into his own power, except as we pass through these prophecies. Because even here, he says that you need to go to Jerusalem and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses. And so, to me, this is not a denunciation of, of looking at chronology. Because if it was, then the Millerites uh, were wrong in what they did. Because think about it. If it says it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, and that's just time setting, this is in the time of Christ, well, that would still apply in the time of the Millerites. And so the Millerites would have been wrong to take the Bible and to try to predict events. But they weren't wrong in doing so. But they were wrong in the events that they predicted. But they weren't wrong in looking at the prophetic periods and understanding them. So we're not wrong to look at prophetic periods. But when we make predictions about what we think is going to occur, we have to be very, very aware that when we did this in the past, we were wrong, and but yet we were right. We were right in the times that we had, but we were wrong in the events. That's the conclusion we draw, drew after July 18, 2020. And so we, we've had witnesses to that, that our time is correct, the dates are correct. But what we can't do is now predict some event. But we can look at what these dates mean symbolically. Nothing wrong with understanding that after this failed Trump prediction, that this movement is going to go through a process where we're going to have to re-examine how we came to our conclusions 
that we have to divorce from the strange wives. And, and what that means and how that's connected to 2030, we don't know. But we have to then give a message to the Levites, and that hasn't happened. And if we were expecting that, you know, the Sunday law is coming in 2022, and we haven't actually done our work in giving a message to the Levites, we know that we're running ahead of the message because we know that midnight in the midnight cry in the line of the Levites has to occur. That is, those have not yet occurred. Adventists are not ready for the Sunday law. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, we can now close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you again for the Sabbath and the blessing of fellowship and, and um, the blessings of your word, studying together. We pray for the studies tomorrow, uh, Dwight's study and my study in the afternoon. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit can help us in preparing for those studies and, um, and that this Sabbath day will be truly a blessing. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.